Hello dear students. In this lecture, we will discuss about folic acid versus methotrexate. Right? So when we are discussing about these two things, so what are all the aspects which I will be covering in this lecture? That's going to be the first thing I would like to introduce you on. So what we are going to do is, let's study the complete biochemistry part of your what is that? That is your folic acid. Along with the biochemistry part of your folic acid, we will also study the pharmacology part that is your methotrexate and how these two are interlinked with each other. So that is what we will learn in this lecture. So let's start with the folic acid, right? So when we are speaking of folic acid, okay? So folic acid comes from where? As of course, folic acid comes from the food. What is that? Food. So from the food, whatever the folic acid comes, it is in two forms. What are the two forms? Something called as monoglutamyl folate. Monoglutamyl folate. Okay. So that is one thing. And the second thing, it can be in the form of, of course, if there is something mono, which can also be very good, that is going to be polyglutamyl folate. So we have monoglutamyl folate and polyglutamyl folate. So whenever you intake the folate, means you eat the food which consists of monoglutamyl or polyglutamyl folate. Remember, these polyglutamyl folate will again further get converted into what is that? That is into monoglutamyl folate. So basically what is the rule? So in your body, if folate has to get absorbed, has to get absorbed, what should be it is in the form of? It should be in the form of monoglutamyl folate. What is that? Monoglutamyl folate. So monoglutamyl folate is the form which can get absorbed. So this conversion occurs in the jejunum, predominantly occurs in the jejunum predominantly occurs in the jejunum and also part of duodenum so who does this so in the cells which are located in the mucosa of the jejunum will convert this polyglutamyl folate into monoglutamyl folate periods of time. okay so now that we know that monoglutamyl folate will get absorbed so the site of absorption what is that site of absorption so where exactly your body whenever you take the folate, that folate will get absorbed where exactly or which part of the GIT? Predominantly in the jejunum. Predominantly in the jejunum. So, remember if you are preparing for any competitive exam and this is going to help all the neat PG aspirants as well because this can be a simplified direct question. What is the side of absorption of folic acid? That is jejunum. So, definitely they will not ask like that. A patient because of some particular gastrointestinal disease, maybe tumor, maybe obstruction, or maybe something else, the maybe perforation, because of that, he underwent removal of jejunum, which vitamin deficiency can occur, that is going to be folate, my dear students, okay? So, once we understood about this, from the jejunum, folate will get absorbed, then this folate goes to liver, folate goes to liver, liver so whatever we are going to discuss what happens in the liver first okay so in the liver what happens to the folate so what we got is monoglutamyl folate so this monoglutamyl folate so let's understand let's simply take it as a folate or a folic acid this folic acid under the influence of one favorite enzyme of every student who knows this that is uh, that is your dhfr dhfr called as dihydro Folate dihydrofolate reductase dihydrofolate reductase so which can be short formed into DHFR so from here on onwards I am using DHFR as a short form for what dihydrofolate reductase so this DHFR will convert folate into dihydrofolate what is that dihydrofolate very good so where exactly this conversion occurs this occurs in your liver this is also a very important point okay so this dihydrofolate my dear students what happens to this further let's see so this dihydrofolate under the influence of the same enzyme that is your dhfr my dear students what is that dhfr so this dihydrofolate will get converted into tetrahydrofolate what is that tetra hydrofolate so tetrahydrofolate again from here on onwards i will be using a short form thr for your tetrahydrofolate 
right? So now this tetrahedron polytron, till here everyone remember, methotrexate inhibits DHF, methotrexate inhibits DHF, but how exactly it is clinically significant, right? So the question is how the methotrexate clinically useful? That is a question for us. So how exactly it is going to be useful for that? What happens to this tetrahydrofolate is a big question. So this tetrahydrofolate, everyone ends the conversation here. Actually, the conversation should begin here, right? What I mean by this? Because this that tetrahydrofolate, everyone will tell, yeah, it involved in DNA synthesis. How it is involved in it, right? That's the first thing. How it is involving in purine synthesis? How it is involving in pyrimidine synthesis? So let's understand all of those, right? So this tetrahydrofolate so will get converted will get converted into something very interesting what is that it will get converted into something called as 5 comma 10 5 comma 10 methylene what is that a methylene tetrahydrofolate so it is getting converted into methylene tetrahydrofolate basically a methyl group has been added so if methyl group has been added so remember very very simple for many students it's a very very confusing aspect and many people hate biochemistry because of this only because something getting added something getting removed so that will confuse you just if you look at a cycle so let's simply understand we had something called dhf okay to this THF, I need to add, me add methyl group. So the question comes to us, who is giving this methyl group? Who is the donor here? So the question is, who is the person who will donate methyl group? So the methyl group is donated by your amino acid, that is your serine. What is that? Serine. Okay. Now this serine, my dear students, are giving the methyl group. Methyl group to whom? Tetrahydrofolate. So, tetrahydrofolate is there. To that I added a methyl group. Now, what happened? Methylene tetrahydrofolate. So, why it is 5 comma 10? I'll tell you in a minute, okay? Because it will also add a hydroxyl group, okay? What is that? Hydroxyl group. So, from serine, what is that? We have tetrahydrofolate and we have serine. So, serine will give one is methylene group. And one more is OH group, that is hydroxyl group. So these are the two things which are added to tetrahydrofolate. That's why we have 5 comma 10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. So serine, after giving this uh, particularly that is methyl group, it will get converted into glycine. It will get converted into glycine. So for this tetrahydrofolate to 5 comma 10 methylene tetrahydrofolate conversion requires an enzyme. What is that serine? So from the serine only what you are doing? You are doing what is that? Hydroxyl group transferring serine hydroxy of course one more group what is that yes there's methyl group so methylene yes methylene transferase what is that transferase okay so what is the name of the enzyme that is only called as a serine hydroxy methylene transferase which will convert what is that which will convert tetrahydrofolate into methylene tetrahydrofolate now what is the importance of this conversion let's see right so this methylene tetrahydrofolate my dear students actually this will get converted back into dihydrofolate this will get converted back into dihydrofolate. So while it is converting back into dihydrofolate, it will convert something called as dump. Okay. So that is not the dump which your girlfriend did to you. D-U-M-P that is deoxyuridyl monotransferase. Okay. That is not D-U-M-P dump. That is D-U-M-P that is D for deoxy. Okay. So that is a deoxyuridyl monotrans <coughs> monophosphate will get, get converted into DTMP, deoxythymidine monophosphate with the help of an enzyme called as a thymidylate synthase. Remember the name of the enzyme? Thymidylate synthase. Okay. So this is going to be very, very important enzyme when we are talking about the drug methotrexate. So today we'll be discussing about that as well. So for now, remember, so DUMP, that is deoxy, yes, deoxy uridyl monotransferase will get converted into thymidyl monophosphate that is only with the help of tiny village synthase but but that is not the end of the story what happens further so this methylene tetrahydrofolate can get converted into something called as 10 methylene tetrahydrofolate what is that 10 methylene tetrahydrofolate 
10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. So, this 10 methylene tetrahydrofolate will further involve in something called as what is that? Yes, it can involve in purine synthesis, my dear students. It can involve in purine synthesis. It can involve in purine synthesis. Uh, along with the purine synthesis, uh, this 10 methylene tetrahydrofolate can also enter into methionine metabolism. What is that? Methionine metabolism. Okay. So, basically methionine metabolism. When we are speaking of methionine, what is methionine? It is a type of sulfur containing amino acid. So, sulfur containing amino acid metabolism requires which in, which is this? That is only a methylene tetrahydrofolate. Methylene tetrahydrofolate. So, this is the story of your body that folic acid. So, simplified folic acid. So, it get converted into purine synthesis. It can enter into methionine metabolism. It can form what is that? That is your that is your pyrimidines. This pyrimidines involves in DNA synthesis. DNA synthesis. So, so this is the story of your what is that? Folic acid metabolism. Now, once we understood folic acid metabolism, so let's understand about one very, 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 very important drug. So, that is what is that? Methotrexate. So, methotrexate has been a favorite question from all the types of exams that might be including your what is the competitive exams or maybe your university exams. Irrespective of that, methotrexate is always playing a key role when it comes to anti cancer drugs. So, let's study about that only methotrexate. What is that? Methotrexate. First, let's start with the methotrexate. Okay, so methotrexate is a type of anti cancer drug. It's a type of which drug? Anti cancer drug. So, when we are speaking of methotrexate, we start off with a very basic important thing mechanism of action. What is it? Mechanism of action. Mechanism of action is having very, very important point because we always remember one thing it affects dihydrofolate reductase. It does not just affect the dihydrofolate reductase, but also other things are there. So, the first mechanism of action, so the first one, it inhibits something called as a dihydrofolate reductase enzyme, right? So, if dihydrofolate reductase has been inhibited, now what is going to happen automatically? Your, what is that? So, it will decrease the DNA synthesis, DNA synthesis, of course. Along with the DNA synthesis, uh, so if I'm speaking of DNA synthesis, uh, so how exactly does the impair or decrease the DNA synthesis? Uh, actually, not just dihydrofolate reductase inhibition, but also the, here comes the mechanism number two. What is that mechanism? That is, uh, it will inhibit one more enzyme called as a thymidylate. What is that? Thymidylate synthase time delayed synthase so basically there are two mechanisms with which methotrexate acts what is that methotrexate acts by inhibition of dhfr and also time delayed synthase so because of that it decreases the dna formation which can further impair rna formation impair rna as well as protein synthesis, impair RNA and protein synthesis. So, these are the important points of your, what is that? Methotrexate with respect to its mechanism of action, okay? So, once we understood about the mechanism of action, let's talk about a little bit about pharmacokinetic properties, right? So, this methotrexate can be given orally. So, we basically, it is in the form of tablets available. Very good. If it can be orally given, so it is having approximately 50% bioavailability. Bioavailability if given orally, approximately how much? 50% bioavailability. Actually, it is well absorbed and also more than 50% bioavailability. The more important point is if given orally or any root, it also has 50% plasma protein binding ability. What is that? 50% plasma protein binding ability. It can be absorbed orally. It can be absorbed orally. 50% plasma protein binding. So, whenever plasma protein binding comes into the picture, definitely there is an MCQ. So, wherever there is a plasma protein binding. So, let's consider this is your albumin for example. Two albumin. This is your which protein? Albumin. Two albumin. Who is binding? Very good. Who is that? Methotrexate. Right? Okay. For example, I will introduce drugs such as aspirin or for example, sulfonamides. So, sulfonamides and aspirin actually they have more affinity towards the albumin. Very simple logic. Basically, albumin is a protein to that who is binding methotrexate. 
Now, there enters what is that into the picture that is albumin or a sulfur. So, in even let's simplify the story. So, albumin is a albumin is a person who is dating what is that methotrexate. So, methotrexate and albumin are together happily there enjoying their relationship. Now, into this picture, third will enter. So, is that let's imagine the bestie. Who is that bestie? Now, bestie enters. Automatically, what will happen? This albumin slowly kick out all the methotrexate out. So, methotrexate kicks out of the albumin. So, basically, free methotrexate in the plasma will be increased. Free methotrexate in the plasma will be increased. So, automatically, the toxicity can occur. So, remember the displacement reaction. Okay. So, sul aspirin, aspirin, and sulfur. And sulfonamides, what are they going to do? Sulfonamides displace your what is that? Methotrexate. What is that? Displace the methotrexate. Displace the methotrexate. Okay. So, this is the story of your methotrexate pharmacokinetic properties. Once we understood about this, so let me tell you what, are, what can be the types of MCQs can be asked just to, in the slide what we are discussing right now, whatever in the picture. Okay. All of the following are true about methotrexate except. Okay. All of the following are true about methotrexate except. Option A. DHFR synthesis inhibitor. Time delayed synthesis inhibitor. It can be absorbed orally. It, ca it can be absorbed orally. Or it is having high plasma protein binding than sulfonamide. So the answer is going to be the last option. All of the following are true except. Okay, so please remember this type of questions. Very, 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 very important ones. And methotrexate has been a very favorite question. Now you'll understand why. Because the, of the its uses, my dear students, uses of methotrexate has been a very important point to be remembered. What is that? So uses of methotrexate, it can be used in the treatment of choriocarcinoma. It can be used in the choriocarcinoma. So Actually, it can be considered even curative treatment of your choriocarcinoma. Curative treatment of choriocarcinoma. Apart from the choriocarcinoma, where else do we use methotrexate? So, where do we use methotrexate? So, methotrexate is also useful in the treatment of your one of the most important cancer. First, I'll tell you about the cancers. After that, I'll come back to the other uses of it. Okay. So, basically, it is also useful in the treatment of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL. Okay. Now, apart from that, it is useful in the head and neck cancers. Head and neck cancers. Okay. Apart from the head and neck cancers, it is also useful in one more type of leukemia that's only called as non-Hodgkin's. What is that? Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay. So, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is a subtype of Chronic, lympos, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, it's a type of non-Hodgkin's leukemia. So, basically, which involves that multiple lymph nodes has to be spoken. Okay. So, head and neck cancers, it's useful. Where else it is useful? It is also useful in the treatment of one of them is your, that is your carcinoma of the lungs. Apart from that, it is also useful in osteosarcomas, osteo sarcomas okay now apart from that what are the other non-cancer uses what is that the other uses okay so which is not related to the cancer this is also very important point because remember it is suppressing the activity of folate basically which will decrease the purine and pyrimidine synthesis because of which what will happen your bone marrow will not be able to produce the cells which are responsible that is your white blood cell production will be impaired so because of that white blood cell reduction is impaired so basically it can be used in the treatment of very very important aspect what is that autoimmune diseases what is that autoimmune diseases okay autoimmune diseases so when we are asked to be speaking of autoimmune diseases itself so autoimmune diseases where there is a excessive activation of one's own immune system which is destroying what destroying the <coughs> any particular organ of the Body. For example, let's take myasthenia gravis in which NM receptors are destroyed by the autoantibodies. So, in that case, we can consider what is that methotrexate. Again, see, this is not a first-line drug of choice. Remember, it's not a first-line drug of choice because 
in the first whenever there is autoimmune diseases we try to treat it with for example steroids or any other treatments which are available if that fails only then we are going to go for the immunosuppressing agents like methotrexate medicine okay apart from that it is also used in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis what is that rheumatoid arthritis okay so again rheumatoid arthritis also what is that 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 methotrexate is useful as a drug which is that demat this is modifying anti rheumatoid drugs okay so that is also useful and also my dear students where else this drug is useful remember this drug is very much useful in the treatment of ectopic pregnancy okay yeah here is a place where everybody will fall into the trap okay so all of the following are the treatment strategy for ectopic pregnancy except in that methotrexate is one of the most important measures of treatment which can be considered so which type of ectopic pregnancy sir if it is ruptured can i give methotrexate your patient will die because if the pre ectopic pregnancy has already ruptured for example pre so in the isthmus of the fallopian tube there was a ectopic pregnancy so that rupture and cost will cause the bleeding and death so not the ruptured ones unruptured ones okay uncomplicated uncomplicated so rather than telling uncomplicated i would like to use the better term that is your unruptured ones un ruptured ectopic pregnancies okay so unruptured ectopic pregnancies we are going to use and again from the obs gain is a very important question so if you are using methotrexate for the treatment of ectopic pregnancy what you are going to do you are going to monitor something okay again so monitor as soon as i tell monitor don't think it is a therapeutic drug monitoring no this is not a therapeutic drug monitoring rather if your treatment level if the your treatment of the ectopic pregnancy is successful with methotrexate or not to monitor your treatment outcome we are going to check for the serum beta hcg levels serum beta hcg level so serum beta hcg levels are being measured during the treatment of ectopic pregnancy so if treatment is successful if it is uh, if it is uh, successful then automatically there will be decrease of beta hcg so as we continuously monitor so there is a particular levels which we will monitor which will learn from ob scanny so basically beta hcg level should start to drop only then your ectopic pregnancy treatment with the help of methotrexate is successful if not you are going to explore the other options which are there for the treatment of ectopic pregnancy so this is a story of uses of methotrexate once we understood when we are speaking of anti cancer drug side effects have been always been a very important mcqs okay so what is the side effects of methotrexate at any dose so this is very important at any dose okay at any dose it is my dear students toxic to bone marrow what is that toxic to bone marrow okay so this is a very very important a toxic to bone marrow it can also lead to decrease of your what is that decrease of your very very important platelet count because basically it will suppress what is that it will suppress uh, your platelet synthesis from the bone marrow because of its ability to stop the formation of uh, formation of purines and pyrimidines uh, and also my dear students it can lead to megaloblastic anemia can lead to megaloblastic anemia so if there is megaloblastic anemia so now you people should understand why because of deficiency of b9 deficiency of bine so in this megaloblastic anemia again from the pathology point of view i'd like to give you people one hint here so the megaloblastic anemia if it is a b9 deficiency b9 deficiency if it is b12 deficiency so what are the biochemical parameters in both of them you are going to find megaloblastic anemia and also in all the megaloblastic anemias you are going to find one thing that is your hypersegmented neutrophil hyper segmented neutrophil that is very common thing with your b9 and also your b12 so how do we differentiate by checking some serum values so remember if b9 is not there so automatically it will impair the metabolism of your methionine methionine so basically methionine cycle has your homocysteine also so there will be increase of homocysteine there will be increase of homocysteine very significantly very significantly if b12 deficiency is there there is a increase of homocysteine 
homocysteine and also along with that my dear students uh, there is increase of something called as the MMA level methyl melanoic acid level okay so if two are elevated b12 deficiency if one is elevated b9 deficiency so whenever you enter the exam hall if you are getting confused so here we have two digits so both of them are elevated it's a very trick to remember so here it is one digit only one that is homocysteine is elevated so homocysteine can be elevated in both of your what is that that is your b9 and b12 deficiency for those of you who are looking for why it occurs, why this elevation, because remember B9 and B12, that is your folic acid and as well methyl cobalamin, both are required in which metabolism? Required in, in your methionine metabolism. Methionine metabolism. So this is the reason why we need to remember about this particular aspect. So that is your side effect. And also, my dear students, since there is a decrease of platelet, so there is an increased risk of GI bleeding. There is an increased risk of GI bleeding. So we have to be very careful. So these are the things which you need to remember when we are speaking of methotrexate. So for example, so what if methotrexate has been given a large amount of dose? Large amount of dose. So again, that is going to be a very important question. What is the antidote? What is the treatment for treatment of methotrexate i'll write it as a mta mtx stands for methotrexate methotrexate toxicity so the treatment for methotrexate toxicity that is i'll give you two options option a is your folic acid option a is your folic acid okay option b will be your folinic acid okay so folinic acid now this is going to confuse you people a lot remember so what is the correct answer so the treatment of methotrexate toxicity that is going to be a folinic acid so what is this folinic acid folinic acid is a natural form folinic acid is a natural form of folic acid and this folinic acid so remember let's go back to the starting of the lecture whenever you take folate into the body right so these are the enzymatic conversion so a lot of steps were taking place right so to form methylene tetrahydrofolate and all these things so here with the that is your folinic acid does not require yes it does not require the activity of it does not require the activity of which enzymes activity of enzymes like uh, that is your dhfr dhfr dihydrofolate reductase for example mthfr okay for example that is serine hydroxymethylene transferase it does not require any of these enzymes so it does not require the enzyme activity of enzymes it is naturally active it is naturally active so that is the reason why we are going to use what is that Polinic acid. So the answer is not folic acid. Remember, many students make a mistake. Folic acid is not the treatment, not the treatment for methotrexate. Polinic acid. Remember loud and clear. What is that? Polinic acid. Polinic acid is the treatment for methotrexate toxicity. So now the polinic acid can also be called as your leucovorin. What is that? Leucovorin. Okay, so folinic acid or a leucoorin will be the treatment for your as methotrexate toxicity, not folic acid. And this is a very, very simple mistake which can happen. Why? Because you go into the exam hall, DHFR. DHFR is the enzyme that is inhibited by methotrexate. So that is why we can give folic acid will be the wrong thought because when we are looking at, for example, I have DHFR. I have DHFR. Okay. DHFR is standing here and I will give it two options. One is your folate. Okay. One is your methotrexate. Okay. DHFR has a higher affinity towards methotrexate than compared to the folate. Means basically folate will be rejected in the presence of methotrexate. Okay. So basically it's like Two, two guys try, trying to impress the same girl, but the girl got impressed by one person that is methotrexate. Like that only DHFR has more affinity towards your, what is that? Methotrexate. Okay, that is the reason 
Poleta, poleta, even if you give, will not be useful. That is why we are going to use natural form, which is a, does not require any enzymatic conversion. So that is going to be the treatment of your, what is that? That is your methotrexate toxicity. Once we are done with that, so for this is going to be for your NEET PG upcoming exam. This is a very, very important point. That is newer congener, newer congener of your methotrexate. We have something called as the primetrexate. What is the name of the drug? Premetrexate. Okay. So, Premetrexate, there are few points I would like to give you people. So, these few important points. So, the first important mechanism of action. Earlier, we discussed what is the mechanism of action. Yes, the mechanism of action is even what is that? That was DHFR inhibition by methotrexate. But the first and most important mechanism of this drug, what is the name of the drug? Premetrexate. So, the mechanism is the first mechanism, it inhibits. Thymidylate synthase, it inhibits thymidylate, thymidylate, thymidylate synthase, thymidylate synthase, that is the first mechanism, the second mechanism only it will inhibit DHFR, so this is a very important point to be remembered, while methotrexate inhibits DHFR more, while premetrexate inhibits thymidyl synthase more. So, the newer drug inhibits thymidyl synthase more, thymidylate synthase more. So, this is one important point and this is the drug which is used where this very specifically preferred in two conditions. Again, this is going to be very powerful MCQ and also very, very important point to be known, especially when we are speaking of the newer drugs. So, remember, this is a drug which is widely used in Mesothelioma. Mesothelioma. Mesothelioma is a tumor of your pleura. It's a pleural tumor. It is a pleural tumor. So, pleural tumor which occurs as a result of pleural tumor, tumor of pleura. So, it can occur because of multiple causes. One of the most important causes are very, very mesothelioma is specific to which lung disease. It is specific to one type of pneumoconiosis, that's occupational lung disease that can be seen with your asbestosis. Okay, so asbestosis, so it's not the most common tumor of asbestosis, but rather the most specific tumor. Remember, for asbestosis, the most specific tumor, most specific tumor of your asbestosis is mesothelium, most specific to asbestosis. And also it is used in the small cell, what is that? Small cell cancer of the lung, what is that? Small cell cancer cancer small cell cancer of lung okay so small cell lung cancer or small cell cancer of the lung again the small cell cancer of the lung has a very important point to remember this is one of the very aggressive form highly metastatic associated with smoking so these are the points to be remembered from pathology now the last important point it causes one side effect what is the side effect it, this drug will cause it will cause very important it will cause a rash rash so, such rash can occur with any drug, right? Yes, but I'll tell you what is the specific, like, you know, what is the specific important point to be known about this rash erythema, specifically, where is that? In the hand and foot, in the hand and foot, okay? Hand and foot, okay? So, this drug causes a rash and erythema in the hand and foot, but does not involve the mouth. So, do not confuse this one with HMFD. What is that? hand foot mouth disorder which is a viral disease hmfd is a viral disease here it is erythema and rash in the hand and foot so this can be also be called as the hand and foot syndrome hand and foot syndrome hand and foot syndrome which are not like you can remember hand foot syndrome just remember it as a hand foot syndrome remember there is no mouth okay there is no mouth in this case so this is a point to be remembered hand foot syndrome is caused by which antifolate drugs so which of the following antifolate drug causes uh, hand food syndrome can be a very potential mcq that is going to be uh, what is that hand food syndrome is caused by your very importantly yes that is your premetrexate which is a congener of methotrexate so this is a complete story of biochemistry as well as what is that yes that is your <coughs> that is your pharmacology aspect of your Folic acid as well as methotrexate and premetrexate. Premetrexate is a newer congener. The two important uses are very important potential MCQ, mesothelioma, and small cell cancer of the lung. So, this is a complete aspect of your folic acid versus 
Nito Taxi. Keep following for more. Thank you.